the rise of China, its authoritarian political system, and assertive regional policies have presented many governments and businesses with a dilemma. Engage constructively with it as a modern superpower, or to do business with it, or move to strategies to counter, contain, or confront it. Or try to do both, and strive for a balance between trade and security. Our panelists will give their views on how to best navigate this tricky environment. I will begin this session by having a conversation with Sir Ian Duncan Smith before I turn to our virtual panelists from India. Sir Ian, who is with me here in the studio, is a member of parliament, a former leader of the Conservative Party and co-founder and UK chair of the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China, IPAC an influential international cross-party group of legislators set up last year that works towards reform on how democratic countries approach China. So Ian, let me begin our conversation by asking you firstly, what are the objectives of IPAC? Well, um, IPAC, the Interparliamentary Alliance on China, was set up because uh, many of us uh, con are concerned about the uh, the global reach and the rise of China, but at the same time, uh, the abandonment really of a previous, more diplomatic approach of China's to the rest of the world. So President Xi's arrival has also coincided directly with a much more aggressive stance at home and abroad. Uh, you see that in the treatment of uh, internal minorities such as the Uyghur, a uh, uh, terrible uh, uh, impression that's taking place on them. And then also just Christian groups, uh, the Falun Gong, all uh, persecuted internally, uh, as well as the Tibetans, long ago uh, kind of abandoned by most of the world. But reality is still terribly oppressed there. And then you've got Hong Kong, where the Sino-British Agreement, uh, uh, which is an international treaty, has just simply been torn up by the Chinese government. And uh, they've now imposed a whole different kind of uh, legislation in there, which basically shapes any protester as a terrorist, essentially. Uh, and many of the people that were just peacefully protesting are now seeing themselves in prison, some now facing life imprisonment. So this structure internally is much more oppressive than it was, and externally much more aggressive. I mean, this is a country that has uh, basically occupied the South China Seas against the UN's own view that they have no particular rights there. They're militarizing that against the concerns of Vietnam and the Philippines and others. Uh, clearly, there are natural resources there. So IPAC was set up uh, to start to talk about how dependent has the free world become on Chinese goods and services. And that dependency feeds uh, that process of aggression because it seems to grow and grow. And we now have to figure out whether or not we need to be as dependent and what we do in terms of uh, diplo diplomatic and also economic pressure. Which brings me very neatly to my second question. Seven months ago, uh, the UK's integrated review, the first comprehensive post-Brexit foreign and security policy review, highlighted a tilt towards the Indo-Pacific, with China, India and Japan recognized as the three most important powers in the region. The re review also identified China as an authoritarian state, posing the biggest state-based threat to the UK's economic security and a systemic challenge to British security, prosperity and values. But at the same time, the review made clear that the UK will seek to engage China at multiple levels, including as a systemic competitor for economic trade and investment amidst additional safeguards. My question to you, Sir Ian, is, has the UK got the balance right between trade and security with China? No. I think that uh, that report pulled its punches when it came to China. It didn't with Russia uh, because they weren't a competitor. They were seen as a threat. But uh, when it came to China, suddenly the language was toned down so that they are a competitor. I don't think. I think China uh, poses the biggest challenge since the ending of the Cold War to the free world. We'd become pretty lazy, really. There was a general sense that uh, at the end of the Cold War, the real threat to democracy uh, had disappeared, that democracy was a natural process that would eventually every country would lead to that. 
free trade would lead people to, uh, to a dem democracy and the rule of law. I remember having this argument when I was in government with the then Chancellor, uh, George Osborne, and discussions with various members, and I was always confronted by this, well, don't worry, because free trade will eventually lead China into a more democratic, uh, a more uh, a believer in human rights and, and, uh, and the rule of law, and it has done exactly the opposite. In fact, China is going in the opposite direction now, and therefore I think it's not a case of just competitors and engaging. You can somehow separate out the idea of trade from the concerns about their posture militarily and in their foreign policy. Uh, and I think we now have to recognize that there really is almost no such thing in many senses as a purely commercial company in China. China has its very strong hooks into every single Chinese company. They are demanded of uh, their law, uh, which Smith says that anything they glean in their overseas development and trade with other countries, China has the rights to take and to use, and they have to declare that to them. So that means, you know, and also the fact that they break all the rules. The WTO, they, they're not a full member, but they should be. You know, they're just about to become the largest economy possibly in the world, and yet they still maintain that they're a developing economy and therefore doesn't need to abide by the full rules of the WTO. Well, they do. You can't subsidize companies like Huawei to the degree that they do and let them undercut all the other companies in the, in the free world. All this sort of stuff means that we need to take a serious view about China as more of a threat uh, than as a competitor. But, but what is the alternative economically? And the reason I ask this is that a few days ago, Prime Minister Boris Johnson was quoted in an interview to Bloomberg saying that he was not going to pitchfork away offers of Chinese investment. Uh, and the government has also said, the British government, that Chinese firms are welcome to invest in non-strategic parts of the economy. So what you're suggesting, of course, is a much tougher line in terms of what the government has said. But what is the alternative to not dealing with China in that sense? I mean, is there even a possibility of not dealing economically with China? Well, it, it, I think our problem is, uh, and this is not just the UK, by the way, Europe, America, etc., are enormously dependent, become enormously lazily dependent on Chinese goods and services, A, because of the costs that they were offered uh, cheaper services. But that has also had the, the, the non-beneficial effect of destroying much of uh, the um, economic hinterland in many of these countries. So, for example, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we had a whole series of companies in the free world that could do telecommunications infrastructure. We're down to three now, out of probably about 13 or 14 that were in existence for none in the United States, now none in the UK, when we were actually leaders in this area. Why? Because the nature of how China has subsidized their business has meant they've undercut every single market and basically have skewed the whole natural process of the free market. So, so you know, the, we can't just suddenly say it's okay. And then the other question I would place to everybody is what do you define as strategic? I mean, I happen to think energy security is a strategic requirement. But does that mean then that Chinese companies, heavily subsidized by their own, come in and start building nuclear power plants? And uh, we become dependent on them for all sorts of technology. These things are very strategic now. There is very little in the world that is not strategic when it comes to a country that doesn't obey any of the rules that everybody else has to obey. Then suddenly this becomes more threatening. Thank <music> you.